Welcome to Black Man Lab. We are live Monday, June 21st. We are excited tonight. We have a great topic. Um, one that's near and dear to us is um, the members of the Black Man Lab. Uh, the subject is being a black father. So uh, we have some great guests tonight that will speak on their experiences of being a black father and uh, all the different trials and tribulations and beautiful things that go on with being a black father. And I'm sure my brothers that are uh, on with me tonight, my, my partners and board, fellow board members of the Black Man Lab will have some insight as well. Um, with me tonight, I have my brother, as always, every week, riding side, shotgun with me is my brother, Joe Barker. Joe, what's happening, my man? How's everybody doing this evening, man? What a what a great panel we have. Really excited about the conversation tonight, man. It's uh, you know, for me, this topic is a daily celebration, but we'll get into all that. But um, thank you for uh, being here with us, good brother. Good to see you back in the place. Always holding down your family, and uh, I look up to you for that and all that you do, man. Keep it up, bro. Appreciate that, Joe. Appreciate that, man. Uh, also, my brother Jared Grant. Jared, what's happening? What's up, Black Man? How y'all doing? Good to see everybody today. Uh, looking forward to a, a, a great session. Awesome. Glad to have you here, Jared. And my brother, Frederick Parham, is in the building, y'all. Fred, you know, we, we lucky. We, we, there was a time when Fred would be here every week, but he gets so busy nowadays doing the work of the community that sometimes we don't have them, man. As a matter of fact, this past weekend, had a great event. I'm mad I missed. I'm down in Florida, but I'm mad I missed uh, the big dashiki party that he and Brother Eldridge Washington throw every year. So uh, I know it was a stone cold blast, even in the even in the bad weather. I know you all had a blast. So tell me about it, Frederick. How was it? Hey, great to see you, Marty. Man, sending blessings to you and the family. Uh, and the other men on the call, including my brothers from another mother, Jared and Joe, uh, man, personally want to just extend uh, much appreciation, Marty, because it was a monsoon out there, brother. Uh, <laughs> so it wasn't the first time that it rained on Juneteenth, and that didn't stop the show then, and it didn't stop the show tonight, last Saturday. Uh, so I'm excited about the topic, man. In fact, my daughters from Maryland are still here celebrating Father's Day through the rest of this week. Uh, so I'll be on and in and out because uh, we're over here at uh, getting ready to have some dinner together. That's awesome, brother. That's awesome. Enjoy, enjoy those moments, man. And, and again, man, I didn't say it early on, but happy Father's Day to all y'all brothers, man. Thank you, brother. um, I know. Man, thank you, brother. You know, be, be, being one that's been in in the field of fatherhood, I know that it's not always easy, man, and it's not always appreciated. So um, I want you to know that I see you, and I appreciate you and love you, man. So um, every week we have some traditions that we do. Uh, first and foremost, we talk about where we came from as it relates to Black Man Lab. Black Man Lab was started a little bit over four years ago. Um, our, one of our founders, Brother Miley Davis, and also Brother Jared Grant here, um, founded Black Man Lab, uh, which started as just four fathers getting together with their sons to hopefully give them a different voice than their own. Um, you know, sometimes we, we have our sons that they'll listen to a uncle, uh, a godfather, a close friend, uh, but sometimes they'll tune us out as fathers. And we, we've, I'm sure we've all seen that. So uh, they came up with the great idea of giving them other voices to listen to. And it worked out really well. The, the young men listened um, and started to really enjoy being in that space. Well, that grew. Uh, it grew to a point that we had, uh, we were meeting live over 250 black men in the same room together to talk about different topics every Monday, just like we do here virtually, but we did it live and in person at the uh, Andrew Wal Walter Young YMCA here in Atlanta. Well, I say here in Atlanta, but I'm not in Atlanta. Um, but every week, and it grew and grew until, of course, COVID hit. And so we had to pivot and figure out a new way to do it. So that's how we got to this virtual space, which, while not the same, has afforded us the opportunity to bring other people into the space from around the country. Um, so. Not, not just in Atlanta, but we brought people in from all over, from L.A., from Chicago, New York, you name it. We've had people on 
on uh, the Black Man Lab, sharing their wisdom. Uh, so that's where we started. One of the things that we do every week also is we make sure that we are in a space to take on this energy that, and, and this information that we are trying to provide every week. Uh, when we meet in person, uh, we make sure that everybody is in a space uh, we call it a safe and sacred space. Uh, that well, there's nobody that has anything that, that is weighing them down and they're, they're in a place to be able to take on information. So what we do is um, we get centered. And I'm going to ask um, brother, brother Fred, can you get us centered today? Absolutely, brother. Right. It is kind of fine to do so. I absolutely wanted to uh, say a word. I was saw some research this week to our viewers and listeners that this thing that we do, this ritual, you know, has pretty much been stamped, man. If you study uh, what they call mindfulness, uh, there is some research that shows that, you know, mindfulness or the exercise of being aware of your breath helps your overall brain and health functionality. And uh, so we want even the youngest children to the oldest men and women on this call to practice mindfulness and being aware of the breath. And so real quick, we'll do it. Uh, no matter where you are, just assume a position uh, where your posture is erect so that you can feel, you know, the maximum opportunity to inhale. And at this time on me, take a deep breath, inhale, three, two, one, and exhale slowly. Three, two, one. Feel your shoulders drop. Last time, three, two, one. Feel your shoulders rise and exhale. Three, two, one. And no event, program, or ceremony should start without getting centered and focusing on bread. Back to you, Marty. Thanks for the opportunity, brothers. Man, thanks again, brother Fred. And, and um, I've been doing that practice daily now. Um, I've been on a prayer call every morning. That's how it opens every morning. And I got to tell you, that is a, the central piece of getting your day started and, and really allowing for the goodness of the day to sink into you. You know, we so so often we wake up and and especially on a Monday, we take on a burden of the week. And uh, when you get allow yourself to get centered early, there is no burdens. You don't feel it, you know. And so uh, I appreciate that, Brother Fred. And that's something that I picked up from you. So thank you. Um, the other thing that we do is we make sure that those that, those that came before us, um, we make sure that we bring them into the space. Um, and what we want to do is uh, bring my brother Jared Grant on to uh, bring the ancestors into the space. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Brother Marty. Um, our ancestors are so important to us. We, we've had ancestors that um, our ancestors uh, were the originators of civilization. And we say our shade to them. Um, whether hum uh, whether ancestors, our ancestors were the, um, the first humans, you know, we give um, great praise and thanks to them. Um, we had ancestors that survived the, the Middle Passage and, and slavery. We say our shade to them. Um, but we had some great ancestors, some individuals that just did some great things that we 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 always like to uh, recognize those individuals, like like Hannibal, you know, like um, Nzinga, Ashe, we uh, Shaka Zulu, Ashe, Martin Luther King, Ashe, um, uh, Marcus Garvey, Ashe, um, Ida B. Wells, Ashe, Rosa Parks, Ashe. So many ancestors, so many individuals um, um, whose shoulders we stand on. But we also have ancestors um, in our own family lines that we also like to um, give reverence to and put them in our hearts and minds. So let's take about three seconds to just think of those ancestors from our own bloodline, those who uh, went before us, came before us, um, and whose whose um, shoulders we stand on. Just three seconds in our hearts and minds. Now everybody raise your fist and on three, say Ashe three times. One, two, three, Ashe, 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 Ashe Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Grant. 
thank you so much, man. We know that this work that we do um, and the work that those that are like us out there do could not have happened without those that came before us. So it's important that we make sure that their, their spirit is in this space and that we, we recognize them because um, that's going to be the, the angels that watch over us that keep us moving forward. So thank you so much for that. Um, without further ado, I want to jump in and, and get the intros of our guests here tonight and uh, get into the conversation. So first and foremost, my man, Martin, uh, Brother Martin, can you come on and give a quick intro of yourself, uh, who you are, and then a little bit of your, your history of what brings you into the space as a father? Uh, well, as I know, I'm Martin, Martin Kenzie. Uh, everybody calls me Sway usually. Um, I am, I'm 22. Uh, I have a daughter. She's five months now. Uh, she'll be six months uh, on the seventh of next month. So, um, I mean, I, I came into space of fatherhood. I mean, by a blessing, you know, by my daughter, by my little girl. So, I mean, that was about, um, that was in January. Um, so, I, I don't know. I don't, like, we're, we're, what's well, so, you know, you came into, you're, you're new at the end of the day. You're a brand new father, right? You said yeah. how many months? Five months. Okay. And then um, what's that experience been like for you at this point? Um, it's been like a revelation of a lot of, of, a lot of um, different choices that I've had to make. And the appreciation of the the new choices that I've that I've been making in light of having another human being that I have to look out for, um, changing the way that I, you know, speak, the way that I operate, and the way that I, you know, treat people, um, it's matured me a lot. You know, I mean, I'm sure. It, everybody on this call can say that their child definitely changed their perspective on a lot of things. And, uh, I mean, it's definitely true for me as well. Um, especially as like a young guy, I mean, I'm 22 years old. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys can imagine before, you know, my daughter came around, like came into my life, you know, I was out here, you know what I'm saying? And, um, <laughs> You know, now now I'm at a position. Wait, where... wait, let me stop you. <laughs> yeah, none, none, of us can that. none of us can relate. Let's move on past that. All right, my bad. I to get the media. No, no, no. <laughs> it's okay, Sway. Sway, it's okay, man. We, I, I wouldn't have expected anything else in 22. <laughs> with you. Your terminology for the way you put that is like, you know, 22 <laughs> You know, we did. <laughs> no, I ain't mean it like that, man. I ain't trying to get nobody in no trouble, man. No, hey, man, it's good. It's all good. We understand, man. We understand. <laughs> and, and, and having having kids definitely changes your perspective on, you know, for lack of a better term, being out there, right? You know, so. Let me say this, man. Let me say this, because I, I met Sway a little bit ago, and I've I've seen him in many of the different spaces with, with Maui and some things we were working on. And it's funny because as I was getting on the call, one of my um, nephews and I were talking, he's, he's about to be a father soon, he and his wife were expecting. And he was like, man, are you excited about the topic tonight? And I was like, well, see, for me, I'm excited about it every day. I'm excited about being a black father every day. And I look at Sway and I think he is a sum total of who he's around. And he doesn't even understand how great a father he's about to be because the environment that he has put himself in and the brothers that he is surrounding himself with. So, bro, your, your, your best is yet to come, man. Don't even worry about where you were or how you got here because you, you're, you're that dude, man, and you surrounded yourself with brothers that are going to pour into you. So it's greatness amongst you, man. Trust me. I appreciate that. What? You know, what's interesting, and, and we'll move on after this, but what, what's interesting is, you know, I've known Sway now for a while with, you know, Black Man Lab and everything. And, and Sway, I didn't know that you had uh, a young daughter. And, and to find that out tells me a lot, because kind of what, what Joe was talking about, we see you as you're moving, moving in these spaces. 
yeah. in a very mature way. Now, I don't know what you were like before the dog, you had daughter, <laughs> but you know that, that that could probably be you know a piece of that falling into there for you that that right. that, that natural kind of a transition into into finding some extra maturity, if you will, because you know having a kid will make you do that. So anyway, yeah. man, look, appreciate you being here. We'll get into it a little deeper shortly. Um, brother Justin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, man. I'm a little camera shy, so. Hey, man, don't, don't, look, if this ugly mug can be on camera, <laughs> anybody's can, bro, so okay. man, don't, don't be shy, all right? So uh, give us a little introduction of yourself. I know, I know a bit about your story, but I want you, you to go ahead and, and, uh, and share. Uh, yeah, my name is Justin Mosley. Uh, I'm a father of four. Um, I have a blended family, two boys, two girls. Um. I just, my oldest just graduated from high school uh, this past May. She's going to Kennesaw State. All right. And my youngest is uh, 12. He's probably the one who you may be familiar with from the current situation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I just pride myself on being a father, uh, most importantly, because I didn't have one. So, you know, uh, I feel like being a father is my, my number one priority. That's, you know, uh, the purpose of my life as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I, I wear that with pride. Um, so anything and everything I can do to support my kids and make them better than me, that's, you know, that's what I, I strive for every day. That's awesome. So give, share a little bit about, you know, you, you spoke about your youngest. And again, I know the story. Maybe the folks listening in don't know it that well. Um, but I, I want you to tell that a little bit. Yeah, um, my, my youngest is 12 years old. He was 10 at the time, um, back in November 2019. Uh, there was a situation on the school bus where the bus driver basically assaulted him. Um, he jacked him up by his clothes, adjusted his body a few times, forcefully grabbed him by the face, yelled at him in his face a few times, and, you know, basically made him look at him while he was yelling at him. It was a very embarrassing, uh, you know, and terrible situation that my son had to endure. Um, you know, and I had to, you know, took every ounce of restraint I had in me to handle it in an amicable fashion. Um, and it took a lot of ups and downs, you know, a lot of meetings, a lot of emails, a lot of failed counsel, you know, a lot of stomping in the ground, punching in the air, cry, you know, sleepless nights. It was, it was very excruciating. Um, and I ended up having to, you know, shell out money and it's, you know, incur expense just to pursue justice for my son. And then, you know, when you think about the fact that the school district has stood behind this individual from day one, even so much as to pay for his defense, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm basically paying twice. I'm paying with my tax money and I'm paying with my personal money to pursue justice. And it took all of that in a year and a half and attorney Davis's involvement just to get this guy arrested. He still gets his day in court, you know, and it doesn't stop there. I mean, my son actually had to get on the stand and look at this guy and tell what happened to him. So he had to relive it all over again just a few weeks ago. And, uh, so it's it's a very painful situation that we're working through. Um, and I just hope, you know, that everybody can be held fully accountable for, for what they've done to my family. Mm -hmm. And as of, it was last week, wasn't it, that the, that the bus driver was arrested? Yeah, we had a hearing May 10th. And then we had, uh, you know, the, the district was playing games with the evidence we subpoenaed, so we finally got the video footage, and uh, the court had an opportunity to view it. And we did have another hearing um, this past Monday, and the judge issued two misdemeanor uh, warrants for the for the driver. Okay, great, great. Well, we'll, we'll be praying for for justice to be served the way it's supposed to be, and uh, you know, I want to personally commend you because yeah, we know right? Somebody dealing with anything with our children, uh, those of us that are, are uh, competent and capable fathers, uh, especially Black men in this world, we know what our normal response would be. Right. right. And um, you, you did well to maintain through all of that. And uh, I think because of that, justice will, will be seen for you and, um, and the right things will be done. So I commend you as a father for that. So great stuff, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. And uh, last but certainly not not least, one of my other fathers uh, from Chicago, uh, dad of one of my, my best buddies from back in Chicago, me and Miles' best buddies back in Chicago, um, 
Benjamin Ramsey Sr. This man has been in, in my life since I was a little kid, in Maldi's life as well, from Little League uh, on on to watch us grow. And uh, we, we he was one of the fathers that we were fortunate to see uh, as we grew up in a neighborhood that didn't necessarily have a whole bunch of strong fathers around, uh, but he was one of them. So with that, Mr. Ramsey. Thank you for that uh, generous introduction, Mr. Monaghan. Uh, okay, well, uh, Ben Ramsey is my name. Uh, uh, really, uh, I feel honored that you have asked me to, you know, to say a few words here. It's not, I don't know uh, about all the different things I need to expound on, but anyway, uh, just to uh, let you know that I have, I have four kids. I have three sons and a daughter. I have eight grandkids and I have two great, great grandkids, a daughter and a, 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 a boy and a girl. And uh, during the course of, of, of my life, you know, I found that it, uh, being a father is, uh, is very rewarding, but it's also very challenging. Uh, it's challenging in that, um, in that uh, <clears throat> you know, you have kids and, you know, you, you're used to doing things a certain way and, and, uh, and you want things done a certain way. And what you find is that you find that each kid that you have is an individual. I mean, they're just as different as night and day, each one of them. Each one of them have things that you have to, you know, uh, that, that you have to find out what works for each one of them. You know, one kid you can probably look at and they will, you know, that will change and make them do something. Another one you might have to, you know, raise your voice at. Another one you might have to get a stick at, you know. So, so they all require different kinds of things that you have to do. And you have to be sure that, when you are when you are when you're bringing up kids, that you make sure that you, or one of the key things is to, is to let them know that you really love and care about them. That's that's very important. And you know, I mean, I was listening to Justin talk about the issues that he's having with his son, and you know, it's really great that you know that when you have a father that stands up for the rights of their kids, you know, that's important. You know, your kid will look back on these times and they will really appreciate it. To know that they had a father, and and more like you know a black father, a black man that stands up for him and show him you know how to do how to do the things that you need to be done in the right way. And then the other thing I'd like to say about that is that uh, Justin has the right guy on the case there. You know, um, you know Maoli is the is the right guy to uh, to be there and 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 to provide him because he he knows how to get things done and he's uh, he's going to be looking at all the angles and he's going to make sure that uh, that justice is served in this particular case. So other than that, I don't know what more I can say other than I have, you know, uh, you know, like four kids, uh, all of them are college graduates, except for one. Uh, that's my, uh, that's my middle son, Anthony. And uh, 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 he only needs to go back and co complete eight hours and he'd be a college graduate. You know, so uh, you know, so I'm proud of all four of my kids. You know, they have just they have great jobs. You know, uh, they make me proud. You know, because of uh, of the things that they have accomplished, and even my grandkids. You know, I have eight grandkids, and and you know, just to see that you know how each one of my kids nurture their kids. You know, and uh, and and to provide a path for them. That uh, that will make them uh, be on the you know on the right stay on the right course and that's important making sure that you keep the kids on the right course because it's easy to uh, it's easy to go astray you know and uh, and like you know I remember when when my kids were coming up uh, I used to um, at, at summertime I would used to make them read for an hour and do math for an hour in the summertime so they wouldn't lose those skills that they had picked up during the regular school year. And my kids used to really hate me for that, you know, but, uh, but what happened is that their friends understood that uh, if you didn't get your stuff done when your man came home, the first thing he was going to do, he's going to call you. He didn't care that whether you was in the middle of uh, running a touchdown or, you know, or shooting a jumper or throwing a curve or whatever it was. If you didn't get your work done, you had to come in and get it done. And you know it's interesting to to uh, to note that you know their friends would make sure that they got stuff done because when I came home and I would check for them, 
they wanted to make sure that they didn't have to, they didn't interrupt their activities that were going on. So, so that was a good thing. So even though, you know, that, I think that that says a lot too as well. And again, like I said, you know, uh, having eight grandkids and all of them, you know, are doing really well. And, um, uh, you know, I love them all, you know, and then I got, uh, I got two great grands, a granddaughter and a, a grandson. And, uh, you know, they're, they're coming along as well too. So, um, you know, so I'm real happy and pleased with that at this point. And, and, and Mr. Rand, if y'all say this, you know, knowing your your um, kids very well because they're friends of mine, mm -hmm. uh, I know that they are what they are because of your involvement in their life and, mm -hmm. and the way that you were involved in their life. Like to your point, I remember that. I remember Ben and Tanya not being able to do stuff until they handled their business at home. And um, something else unique was that. Mr. Ramsey um, was a single father at home with his three kids at the time. Um, and uh, that was unique in, in, in our age, in our age uh, that, that a man would be, you know, in the, the, the custodial parent for the kids. And uh, it, it led to some interesting interactions because you got to see how a, a single father dealt with stuff um, at, a, at an early age. So it was great, great stuff. And we'll touch on some of that as well, Mr. Ramsey. All right. Joe, no, are we going to say something, Mr. Ramsey? No. Uh, okay. Joe, are you jumping in? Sorry, man. Of course, you know, everybody decides to, to call tonight at, at <laughs> the lab. As we're talking about fathers, everybody wants to blow my phone up. I apologize. Right, right. Um, one of the questions I want to ask, and I want to start with uh, Brother Ramsey, if, if I could, um, especially where you have, you know, young brothers such as Sway and such as Justin uh, listening. A question that Marty has asked each week, and uh, uh, it's, it's such a simple question, but it's one that is so powerful. And um, I, I've tried to do a good substitute, Marty, and ask it when, he, when he's here and not around if you don't get to it. But what I want to ask is, could you... Could you talk about some of the myths of being a black father? What are some of the myths? Now, when I say that, what I mean is good or bad. You know, we, yeah. we are constantly hit with the narrative of we the deadbeat dads, that we, yeah. are, we are the not present dads, that we, yeah. are, um, you know, we have multiple baby mamas, all these, these different things. So those are some of the negative ones, but, you know, there's, there's positive ones, negative ones. Could you could you dispel what are some of the the myths out there that you know? Hey, this is what you young brothers may hear about a black father, but that's absolutely garbage because of this. I, what would you say? Don't listen to that narrative, brother Ramsey. I, I think that one of the things that uh, that we might look at is that, of course, I have a son that was a. Uh, um, uh, by another woman as well, you know, and one of the issues that I had, one of the things that I had to uh, to deal with and, conf and be confronted with was that once that relationship ended, you know, how was I going to deal with my son? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, because, you know, a lot of times the mothers will say, well, you know, uh, um, you know, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do this, you don't even have to be involved in their lives. And you know, and and that's an easy that's an easy route for you to take, and and one of the things I found myself doing is telling her that you know, well, even though you and I are not you know together anymore, my Please. son needs to spend time with me, and as a way that I work this out is that you know uh, every other weekend I would get him and he would spend time with me, and uh, he would spend time with his his other brother and his, his other two brothers and sisters mm -hmm. because he as a single child in his household he was accustomed to doing things the way he did them you know he didn't have to share right into my environment you know he had to he had to learn how to share with other people you know it's it's, it's not like when you put your hamburger in the in the refrigerator 
and you can come back and you're going to find that whole hamburger, you know, half of it might be gone, you know, and uh, that's something that you just have to, that's just something that you just have to learn to deal with because that's part of the dynamics of a family, you know, and so, all, so that's one of the things that you, you know, I had to work with, you know, making sure that I was const, a constant force in his life, being there to not only discipline him, but also let him know that I cared about him and that, you know, that I was going to do all the things that I needed to do. And that's, a, and that's one of the big myths, because as I said earlier, women, you know, sometimes they'll say, okay, well, you don't have to do that. You don't right. have to come around, you know. And the other thing is that, you know, a, a black men don't really care about the kids and they don't spend time with their kids. You know, one of the things that 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 I kind of prided myself on, and 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 I think that Marty can kind of uh, confirm this, is that as a you know we had Southeast Little League, and we had a lot of fathers, we had a few fathers, and we had some fathers in Southeast Little League, and we all spent time not just playing games with the kids, but we we spent time you know, uh, uh, teaching them certain lessons, you know, lessons on how to become, you know, a, a productive individual, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, you had to, di- you had to discipline kids certain times and certain times, you know, you had to, you know, you had to, you know, you had to cuddle them, you know, right. and so, so, so black men do know how to love, they do know how to discipline, uh, they do know how to provide the, um, um, the example that, that a young man needs to see and know how to follow, you know. So, uh, so we we work, you know, we work hard on that, and uh, you know, and, and also getting up, going to work every day, seeing your father, uh, you know, because you know fathers are providers, you know, that's really what we are, in, you know, in most cases we're providers, and you need to make sure that you that that you you know you set that example for your son so he can see that. You know, and that's and that's something that um, that I worked hard at because I wanted to make sure that my kids they didn't have everything that they need and everything that they wanted, but they, they had everything they needed. They had everything that they needed. You know, they might have told you that they, that they were hungry and they didn't have anything to eat, but that meant that they didn't want to go downstairs in the freezer and pull something out the freezer and throw it out and eat it. That's what that meant. You know, so you know, but you know, so you know, so those are kinds of things that. You know, I've worked really hard to make sure that my kids never experienced, uh, you know, having the electricity turned off, the gas turned off, you know, uh, not having a place to stay. Those are all kinds of things that, you know, that that fathers work very hard to provide and give their kids examples of certain things that they shouldn't do. Well, brother, I I, I appreciate that so much. Now, let me, let me just go ahead and own this moment so, mm-hmm. so none of my kids watching call me out. Now, mm-hmm. I did get the power cut off one time, <laughs> but what I did is I said, hey, we playing a game tonight, guys. We playing, they were still a little baby, so mm-hmm. I didn't really understand. Daddy just didn't have the money to pay the light bill, so yeah, yeah. things happen, but yeah. yeah, that's real. Now, one of the things that you said that I appreciate so much is, one, how you coach, and so many times, you know, Marty and Molly bring brothers on here that have not just raised children, but raised communities. And with all due respect to my sisters, that is just a common narrative with us brothers. I think everybody on our board of directors has coached a league or team or something outside of just their sons at some point. And, mm-hmm. and you all did lead by example that, Brother Ramsey. Another, another point you made is some of the narratives that are said, well, like you said, you know, we the 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 wives, the exes, whatever it might be, you might say, well, we're good. We don't, we don't need you, this and that. But you fought, and you fought to stay in their lives because, you know, we have to understand there are laws created that there are Black women that can't get government assistance if a Black man is in the house. So let's yeah. be clear, the, mm-hmm. the systematic structure that is torn the Black family apart, and we don't need to buy in that narrative. So thank you so much for for touching on that i i'm a divorcee myself i have three sons and like you i tried to do everything i could just stay in my son's life i whether it was every weekend and when they got old enough and we fit our affidavits and they came and lived with me whatever it took 
but I never was not going to be around him. And mm -hmm. I think that's one thing I wanted the younger brothers to hear, Brother Ramsey, because as they get older and in spaces, and hopefully everybody can have a marriage that lasts 50, 60 years like my parents. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm so grateful for those spaces. But I need my brothers to hear what you said that just because that don't, don't make you less of a father because that's your son, that's your daughter, and right. you stay in their lives and raise those children. So I, I really needed to hear you say that, and these young brothers hear you say that, man. Sway, so, what are your thoughts on hearing that, man? Add something if I could. Oh, go ahead, Jerry, go ahead. Uh, brother Sway, uh, are, are you married? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to, you know, this is just dovetailing out, out off of everything that had been said. Um, one of our um, 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 brothers uh, by the name of Dr. Gary White um, always talks about, um, you know, he's 100% man, but 200% father. Yep. And, um, you know, just, you know, he's, he's does family therapy and he just doesn't do it in therapy. He lives it and models all the positive behaviors um, so that he won't be hypocritical, of course, as a therapist. But of course, he want, he raises three um, beautiful girls and, um, and wants to make sure um, that he's a great husband and, um, and a great father. Uh, I think what I what I would say to you, um, and I and probably ask you some more questions in and around it to make sure that you have all of the legality around um, uh, inside of your child's life, uh, making sure that all of those things um, are taken care of. Now, as Joe talked about, he's a divorcee. I'm a divorcee two times. You know, married in my twenties, married in my thirties. <laughs> You know, and, uh, you know, luckily the last 10 years uh, and unluckily, um, I haven't been married you know, to, um, um, so I, I have a son from my first marriage and a daughter from my second marriage, a 23 year old, just a year older than you, mm -hmm. my son and a 13 year old is my daughter, but I have joint legal and joint physical um, with both of them, 50, 50. That means um, I'm one week on, one week off. And so that means it's not just the weekend, it's all of the daily activities um, that you must do, pickups, um, ball games, um, you know, clubs, homework, you know, you go through all of the same things um, and that you're very present. And I always take uh, Dr. White's comment, um, um, his quote, a 100% man, 200% father, because you're a father no matter where you are um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's just not on those days that you, you, that you have your child. It's also on the days that you don't mm -hmm. um, or that everything is going well and going right. And so I just wanted to add that, Joe. Um, I just thought that would be, you know, there's a legal part um, as well that, um, you're going to want to make sure that it's done that, you know, um, um, and so to some of the young men um, who are having children, you know, make sure that you are um, doing the, the right thing around um, the legality because uh, it certainly will save you in the future um, emotionally, but also economically, um, um, physically. Uh, um, uh, as well, so you you want to make sure that you you have those ducks in the road as well. Yeah, one thing, one key thing that I would like to say that I, that I think I probably missed on, and that is that uh, I think that it's important that we teach our kids respect. And what I mean by that is that you know we have a you know we have sons and we have daughters. And, and, and what I tried to do in my family, I tried to teach my sons that they need to have respect for, for women and, and because they have a sister. And, you know, you don't want anybody to mistreat your sister and you don't want anybody to mistreat you. So, and then the other side of it is, is I taught my daughter to have respect and, and also taught her to be independent. 
and probably today I kind of like may might be you know <laughs> but my daughter I have a very strong daughter she is and Marty Marty can attest to that <laughs> she, you know I, I I taught her to be strong will and she don't have to accept anything that she don't want to accept but I did teach her I did teach both of them to have we you know males to have respect for women and the, and the female to have respect for men. So you have to have mutual, you have to teach them mutual respect because you don't want your boys to be out there disrespecting, you know, uh, 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 women, you know, because that, you know, that's not going to work very well. And you don't want your, you know, your young ladies to be disrespecting guys either. You know, you want them to have, you know, to treat them like they want to be treated. And I think that that's an important concept that we need to let, you know, young men and young women know as well. I have a little bit of input if uh, it's okay. Sure, jump in, jump in, Justin. I was just about to bring you in anyway. Oh, did you have a question for me? Before? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I just want to give a little bit of perspective. I, I, I heard somebody say um, the young guys and he referenced me. I am a little younger, but I'm well versed when it comes to being a parent. Um, I have a plethora of parental situations. Like uh, like I said, I have a blended family. Um, I too was a single parent with two boys prior to my marriage. So I've experienced that. Um, I also have a stepdaughter and I also have a child who didn't live in the home with me. So any situation you can imagine when it comes to uh, parenting, I pretty much went through it. Um, I do have custody of my two boys. Um, and it was a very tough situation. So my, my, my advice to, the, to anyone young or anyone uh, not in a marriage or anyone having any issues with their child is just to own that relationship, right? That doesn't mean it's a dictatorship. That doesn't mean you call the shots. That just means you take full control of your relationship with your child. Don't let the courts or don't let any other party dictate that because you're going to want to have you're going to be the one that has to deal with the outcome so when i say own that relationship that means uh you know do whatever it takes to make it what you want to be don't let anyone deny you anything if you have to go through the courts if you have to have a court just sit down with the other parent whatever it takes you need to make it your priority to own that relationship with your child so you don't regret it in the end um i don't know how to say it you know any simpler than that but just um if there's been times in my life where I didn't fully own the relationship, and then once I started to appreciate myself as a man, as a father, and know my value, and I did take ownership of it, I saw the relationship with my children improve and take on a whole nother level to the point where, you know, manipulation tactics or, you know, anything that was thrown at me did not affect my relationship with my come to full fruition with the situation that I'm going through now because my children just have full trust in, in my decision making and they're confident that I'm going to handle it um, the proper way and uh, the, the, uh, the mother of my children has a lot more respect for me because I'm not sitting on the sidelines allowing whatever to be done or taking whatever is given to me I force the issue to have that relationship with my children on every level and that's appreciated from everybody involved so uh, to, to my young fella here, um, you know, you know, we don't want to manifest any issues, but definitely take ownership, make sure you're in that child life. You have to take care of your child regardless, you know, whether you're with the other party or not. So that's a given. Like anything yeah. you do outside of that is separate from that. So focus on yourself, do what makes you happy and do what makes you feel like the best parent you can be. If it's being in a unified home, I definitely applaud that and definitely what you should aim for. But if it's not, that does not, you know, give you not that you're doing that, it doesn't give you a green light to back up. You know what I mean? Your, the relationship with your child is completely isolated, completely separate, and you should give it 200% regardless of what's going on outside of that. And, um, you know, just in my experience, man, it's paid off tremendously. And, um, you know, I've got a relationship with my children that I never could have even fathomed. So I would encourage you to just, you know, do everything you need to for your child, bro. Let me, let me, let me say this right quick, Marty, before we move on. Uh, I just want to thank Justin for his words. Um, Justin, definitely you're a young man, but you're a wise man. So, of course, we got that respect for you, brother. Um, in addition to, to uh, Sway, though, we got other brothers listening. And so it is so critical what you've offered, man, and what you and, and Brother Ramsey have said. Because I'm, I'm not here to advocate. It's, I mean, you said it perfectly. I don't even need to really 
so much. You said it perfectly. I'm not here advocating for divorce or unifying me. I none of that. What I'm saying is what Brother Grant said. When 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 I started having children, I realized I'm 100% a husband. I'm 200% a father. Dane has to come in this world. I chose my wife. They didn't. My sons didn't ask to come in. I brought them in here. So I am obligated that they are a priority in my life, period. So I appreciate what you said, Justin and, and Brother Ramsey and Jared, the, the framework that Dr. White has given it, man. I've never heard it quite put like that, but I, I mess with that, man. Pre appreciate how real y'all have kept that. And again, I'm, I'm not here discouraging brothers that and sisters have those wonderful marriages. It's, it's, not, it's not what we're doing. It's not what Black Man Lab is about. What we are actually about is creating a safe, space for our fathers and recognizing those fathers that may be doing it in what society has said is unconventional ways but are still doing amazing jobs at it they're still doing great jobs at it and we we want to recognize that because that's what we celebrate you know it, it's not one way to celebrate being a, a great black father we just like so many other diverse ways that we are we know how to do it in a lot of different great ways so justin man well said i appreciate that I, I think, um, you know, one of the things, Joe, that, that uh, we do face as a challenge as, as Black men um, and as Black fathers is kind of how, unfortunately, uh, society has shaped the image of what a Black man is or, or, or a Black father, for that fact, um, how they've kind of shaped that, how they've kind of, how it's kind of put us in a position that a lot of times we're not in the picture, right? Is you can see you can see stuff like um, in in a uh, professional sports game, the running back has an amazing game. He gets interviewed after the game and tell us about your mother and how she raised you and blah blah blah. <laughs> but that 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 guy has a father, you know, and they may be divorced. Or they may be together, but that always, and I, I'm, I'm really cognizant of this, that always winds up not being in the picture. And that there's other, other ways that that shows as well. Unfortunately, what happens, I think, as well, is that our communities start buying into that mindset as well. You know, I was fortunate, um, I think all of us to, to a degree have been fortunate that we've had some great uh, fathers to look at as role models. Um, I was fortunate, again, Mr. Ramsey, you know, I saw he comported himself as a father, my own father. Um, so that gave me an idea of what to do. Um, but that wasn't talked about often, right? We don't talk about uh, the, the greatness of the Black man in general, let alone as a, as a father. Um, so that becomes a challenge within our own community because it gets into the mindset of our own folks, right? To think that it's okay to not be involved. So what you guys are talking about, uh, what Justin has been talking about, and, and as we, we talked to Sway, um, being involved is first and foremost because that has nothing, you as a parent has nothing to do with what you are as a partner, you know, or what you were as a partner, whether you're divorced or you had, you know, you weren't never married and a young lady had a baby by you regardless that's your child and then no matter what you should be um you know taking care of that child in, in the best way that you possibly can um and not only because it's the right thing to do but because at the end of the day and we all know this as fathers at the end of the day whatever happens with that child in terms of their levels of success and i, I know mr randy you going down and having great grandchildren now what you see is their levels of success, success is it. That's what makes you that, you know, there ain't no car that you can buy, no house that you can buy, nothing. But seeing your children have success and then being good people is is the win of your life, you know. So, um, and I'll tell you that, Martin, you, you got a, a, a brand new child, man. You, you'll watch that those first years go by like that. Those first years go by like that. And then next thing you know, they're in grammar school, high school, and gone. And all you can do is pray that you did everything that you possibly could do to, to instill all the right things in them. So um, 
that's the that's the, the win for us. So anyway, um, I want to keep going with the conversation and want to talk about um, what you have seen. And I'm going to start with you, Sway. Um, what you have seen as your biggest challenge so far in being a father. Oh, that's a deep one right there, boy. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I think the biggest challenge, especially right now, because uh, me and my child's mother aren't together, was um, really just working through the um, the relationship between me and her mother, and making sure that it doesn't get in the way of me having a relationship with my daughter. Basically, exactly what you guys are just saying. Uh, and if I, was, if I was silent during that time, it was because I had to sit back and listen um, so that I can receive everything. Um, but yeah, that was definitely one of like the biggest dilemmas. Um, just trying to find a way to be amicable about it, uh, amicable about it because I've, I've seen uh, situations, you know, um, where it goes the other way and it's like a feud that just it can be ongoing and i didn't want that i didn't want that to 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 fester and to start up so i tried to you know um nip it in the bud early and just make sure that she understood that it's you know there it's no love lost or anything like that because we're separated but we still have a child that we have together that that we share thing is you know figuring out you know visitation and and uh, figuring out you know just everything I mean you know you run into a lot of different dilemmas and situations and all type of things man but that was that 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 was and it's it's getting better I'm, I'm I can honestly say it's it's been a lot better um and I think it's because I'm working through a lot of the uh, the legal aspects of it I'm not completely through it um but I've I've already um I'm, I've already taken a lot of steps to uh, work through the legal aspects. So now that she sees that, you know, and now that that's that's something that's on the forefront of her mind, because I'm I'm coming at it aggressively, like uh, Justin said, was it 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 gives her that it gives her a different level of like, okay, he's serious, you know, because she did come to me with the same type of. Um, same type of ultimatum like oh well you don't have to be in the you don't have to be around you know you don't have to you can go and live your life and do your thing because i know you're young that is she's older than me so she's like i know you're young you know and uh just a whole bunch of things i'm just like man that's not me though you know what i'm saying it's like I, at the end of the day I, I wanted a baby girl so now that i have it's no way i mean i don't care if it was a girl or a boy like it's no way that i wasn't going to be around to help help my child mold into the great person that they, that I know that she will be. So let me let, let me let me say this right quick, Sway, because I love how you just unpack that. You know, we have again, I'll always give credit to those that have been married for, you know, decades and together. And any couple that's been married, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years will tell you it's work. It's work. It's work. Well, a lot of that work is raising children. And so what I want to say, man, is the, the narrative of, well, man, it's not worth it because me and mama are together. Da, da, da. It's all work. Parenting is work. So what you're navigating through now, I just want to give you some personal reassurances that, that, bro, just if you were married, it may not necessarily be any easier just, just to be totally transparent. <laughs> You know, it may be a different struggle. It may be a different context of a of a uh, argument or what have you. It may not be as much court, but it may be finessing something else. But what you're trying to do is be a good parent, and that's that's always. I truly believe that there will always be forces that want to work against we as black men specifically to be good fathers. And I am not saying that the forces of black women. I'm saying those are forces, period, that will work against us. And you're always going to have that, 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 that fight and that struggle and just keep being tenacious. Because how you explained it, basically, what I heard you say is it doesn't matter. Like, I, I want all the smoke. Like, this is what I wanted. 
And so whatever I had to do to be in space to raise this little girl, that's what I'm going to do. And I think that's the mentality that you have to have as a parent, period. Yeah, yeah I, I think to just to add a little bit to that, Joe, um, back when I got divorced the first time, the mother of my three kids, um, I was, it was tough for me because, I, you know, all I could think about was my dad, my mom and dad are going on their 60th uh, wedding anniversary in August. So that's all I could think about that I was going to be, you know. And so when that didn't happen, it, it you know, it screwed me up pretty bad that I didn't know what to do. And in the middle of that, I was fortunate that I had some counseling. And the counselor said, um, you know, your marriage may be over, but you also may be a better father now because you were in an unhappy relationship. And there's a lot of uh, trickle-down effect of that unhappiness going down to your children. Um, and so, you know, at the time, I, I fought against that thought process. But eventually, um, as with most stuff that's negative in our lives, we need to learn to let it go. And right. I did. And um, I, I, it's still a work in progress of being you know, the best father that I can be. but um it i think that that actually helped me and i've seen that help other people as well um in terms of them being better parents once they've made that decision that okay this relationship is over but i'm not going to let up on being a, a parent to my children um and you actually probably go overboard with it um and and, and that's why you're probably in that space now man where you start to think that way right where it's like yeah Oh, it, it almost becomes a challenge, right? When you're like, I'm not, yeah. not going to, you know, tell me what I'm not going to be. So, right, uh, I completely appreciate that. Um, what about you, Mr. Ramsey? Now, you know, I know that you've had a a, a, a ton of experiences as it relates to, you know, being a father and uh, all, of course, relationships as well. Well, um, you know, uh, uh, you know. Uh, there's a couple of things that I, you know, you know, I could, I could say, you know, like um, I understand that you say that you say that you 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 are proceeding legally in in dealing with this young lady right now. Is that what you said? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, you know, sometimes I think that um, that uh, um, you know, it, again, it depends on it depends on the person, and uh, I was lucky that. I didn't have to proceed in a legal way. I just uh, was able to work things out because sometimes I find that when you when you go to somebody and uh, and you ask them what they want, they're gonna tell you a lot less than what you think that you were gonna give them in the first place. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, that's what I that's what I have found. You know, you know. Uh, you know, you might set a figure in your mind that you want to, how much you want to, you know, provide on a, on a monthly basis for your kid. And, and you know, if you keep that in your mind and you ask them what they want, it'll probably be less, you know, in most cases, because you're going to put things out there because you want the best for your kids. But again, it depends on the person that you're dealing with. And, that, and, and you have to know that. You have to have an idea of what you're dealing with. Some people, you can do that and get away with it and not have to do the legal thing. Because, see, when you bring the lawyers in there, in the long run, everybody loses in that case. You know, the, the only person that's really getting over on that case in, in a situation like that is the lawyer and the legal system. You know, and sometimes people don't see that, you know, they think, you know, you know, forcing you to get a lawyer, they think that that, you know, they're going to get more out of it. They end up really getting less, you know, in the long run. So, but, you know, whatever works for you, that's what you have to do, you know. So, um, you know, I'm glad you're seeing that you, you know, that you're weighing both sides and you've decided, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, a, you know, a track that you're going to take and you have to, but once you decide that you need to stick with that, because if you decide to, you know, deter a little bit, you know, that might show a little weakness and, and, you know, sometimes people, you know, shark looks for weaknesses, you know, sometimes and you have to be careful about that, you know, so. Yeah, definitely. I haven't, I haven't actually gone into the courts, to the mm -hmm. actual court system yet. I've just gone um, and gotten my, uh, my legal rights to her 
and okay. uh, and those type of things. So yeah. I'm I'm definitely looking looking more towards staying out of the court system because I know yeah. that can open up a whole other beast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'm trying to uh, get it done. You know, as 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 tactical as as possible. Yeah. And like I say, ask ask what they want. You know, ask them what they want. You might find it a slight less than what you think that you that you would give. You know, and and um, or, you know, and, and and you know, approach it that way. Cause, and, and then sometimes, because people begin to see things. Because you know, like I I can recall times when, you know, it was like uh, I, I take you, I give you for example, my son for example. You know, he was uh he was married to one person and he had a baby a, a daughter by somebody else and what. And, 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 you know, she was threatening to take her to, him to court. And what he ended up saying was, say, hey, look, you know, you take me to court if you want to, but you're only going to get this much if you take me to court. You know, she said, but, you know, but, but look at what I'm doing for you on the side here. I'm taking care of my kid. I'm also taking care of your kid, too, on time. When I come and pick up my daughter, I'm picking up her sister, too. So if you want to give up all of these other extras that the court's not going to give you, you can go do that. And sometimes when you put stuff out there and people can see that, you know, they kind of evaluate, you know, they, I mean, you know, they think about, they think, they'll, they'll, they'll start looking and thinking things through, you know, so I'm just saying, you know. Well, uh, I could make a whole bunch of funny comments, but I'm mm. not going to do it right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> my experience has been a little different. Yeah. Um, but Sway, you doing the right thing, man. You start out right now with, yeah. with uh, you know, trying to trying to work the amicable route. Yeah. Um, but things can change. Just know that yeah. things can change. Yeah. So, um, at the at the end of the day, I think what you show as a father will force the hand, regardless. Yeah. You know, so if you show yourself as being a responsible, upstanding father that I know that you are, um, it's going to be hard for for anybody to fight against that um now you know from a legal standpoint when it comes to uh money and all that stuff that can change too but you, you, you know right now you got to work through it so um brother justin i want to bring you back in man you know you have a unique background um, as you were talking about before um but i want you just to talk about what have you seen as the one of your maybe early on in, in your fatherhood, what did you see as one of your biggest challenges? Uh, it's actually been like a progressive challenge. Uh, I'll say the overall issue from beginning to end is just, uh, I know there's no book, but just no blueprint, you know, having no point of reference. Mm -hmm. um, so just trying to figure it all out. But early on, it was definitely financial. I had my first one at 20. Um, and then I went through a lot of alienation issues, some severe alienation issues. And then I went through some issues where uh, there was severe health issues. So all of that culminated into me having, you know, custody of two, two my two boys and um, having my daughter outside of the home. And then um, I got married four years ago and my wife has a daughter. So I also have a stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. um so again the first one would probably be fiscal the second one would be alienation and then the third one would probably be just coalescing all of the different units together uh, my family my children my wife uh our, you know her child my stepdaughter mm -hmm. and just trying to make it all work together so it's, it's definitely been a challenge um but but we're working through it um you know it's well, all for, for First and foremost, clearly you're built for it, brother, because <laughs> that's, that's a lot, you know, and, yeah. and, and we we all experience these kinds of unique challenges it's really in our community is really what it boils down to that, that happens, you know, but, um, you know, talk a little bit about when you say you mentioned alienation, talk, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I don't want to go into the granular details because I know this is a public forum and yeah, yeah. Um, I'm on my, you know, some of my stuff was in a sealed, sure. sealed case, but it was, it was like extreme, like, you know, hundreds of days at a time. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, you could probably do a podcast just on that one <laughs> situation if you really want me to dig into it, which I could without giving up any revealing information, but 
Um, I mean, I've been interrogated. I've had to turn myself. I've been like, bear in mind, I have custody. I've been exonerated of everything, but I've been interrogated. I've had to turn myself in. I've had um, TPOs taken out on me. I've had to turn over, you know, any weapons or firearms that I had. You know, I've had to, you know, there was a joke I used to say that my kid is probably the most expensive kid in Cobb County history because he's talking about well into five figure custody battle. Mm -hmm. um, for for a regular individual, like I'm nobody special. I go to work every day, um, so you know it was it was a struggle. It was definitely a struggle, so so severe that you know I ended up having primary custody. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, it's just it's just nerve wracking just thinking about it all again, and it still goes on. I mean, I actually still have to go to litigation from time to time, mm -hmm. dealing with that situation, whether it's a request for a change in custody or whether there's some erratic behavior that calls for a contempt filing is just a never ending story. Right. Mm -hmm. So now the dilemma is protecting my family, protecting my church, my children and my wife and everybody from being exposed to, sure. to all of that. So, and then you've got time, right? My children are dispersed. So I have to make sure they spend time with their mother. I have to make sure they, sure they spend time with me, make sure we spend time together with my you know, nuclear family in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot, man. But like you said, I'm built for it. And, um, you know, he, even though I didn't have a father, I feel like he set the best example for me because everything I yearn for and missed, you know, I, like you said, I go overboard making sure my kids have it. So that, that's 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 beautiful, man. That part of it, man, is that so often uh, in in our communities, right, there's we have those that are fortunate like myself that I, you know, I had a father and have a father, a great father. I had the likes of Mr. Ramsey, um, Miley's dad, um, Mr. Mills. I had a bunch of good fathers to look up to, but there's plenty of folks that didn't. Um, and, and one of two things, either somebody like yourself can serve that, uh, where, you, where you serve as a, a father mentor, or it's what you're not going to do because of what you didn't have, right? So I didn't, somebody who didn't have a father per se, or maybe they did have a father that wasn't uh, present, that didn't do the right things as a father. So you say, I'm going in the opposite direction. And we see that so often as well, kind of speaking to where you're at. And, and, and I got to say, man, that um, folks like yourself, that go that that wind up going that route and going above and beyond as a father, uh, that that's so admirable, man. And that's so much that we need to we need to really, as a community, really look up to people like yourselves more than what we do. Uh, we really, as a community, need to be looking at you know black men as fathers even more because here's the thing: at the end of the day, the destruction of our communities has been because of the black father has not been in it. Um, and that's, that's by design. So we have to, yeah, I was gonna say, the black father has been strategically removed. Right. Right. So, you know, those of us that, that have been in it trying to do the right thing, we don't know, you know, as somebody said earlier, there's no playbook for it. There's no, there's no textbook for, for fatherhood. Um, you, we, we're all trying to do the best that we can um, as we move forward in being fathers. And all these different challenges that come to us as Black men, it's just different. It's different um, than what uh, the others experience, right? We have to be concerned when we're in the car, when we're driving as parents. We have to be concerned with our jobs. Sometimes we have to bite our tongue, right? Um, in, in, in our place of employment because uh, what, what the images can be and what, how quick we can lose those jobs and then that affects our, our families in different ways. So other communities don't see that. They don't, they don't experience that. So um, we have to be very conscious about it and uh, we have to be very um, almost infectious with it, for lack of a better word, meaning we need to be infecting other black men in our communities to make sure that they want to be where you guys are at, right? Um, ultimately, to be where Mr. Ramsey's at. Uh, uh, a great. I I didn't realize. I, I knew that you had, you know, your your grandchildren had children, but I didn't realize that you are a great grandfather now, Mr. Ramsey. You a young great grandfather, so 
That's beautiful, man. That's where we yeah, all want to be. Well, I'm 74. I don't know whether that's young or not. But that's I'm young, 70. man. That's yeah. young. That's a, that's young for being a great grandfather. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So, so that means, so that means, you know, those two great grandkids are. That makes Anthony the grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's his second youngest son, who's like my little brother. So that that's really funny. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and Ant is a great dad. He's a great. Yeah. So, um, fellas, we are up against the clock. We end at, we end sharply at seven forty-five. One of the things that we do every week is that we always want to know what your habits, rituals, and disciplines are that you do every day that keeps you moving forward, right? And um, we know that every everybody has some habit, ritual, or discipline that you do every day that just kind of to jumpstart your day. Like I just talked about how now. Um, you know, every morning I'm doing my deep breathing and, and it changes kind of the paradigm of my thought for the day. So um, I'm going to ask you guys, what are your habits, rituals, and disciplines that you do every day uh, to keep you moving forward? Martin, I'll ask you first, brother. Well, well, I've, I've picked up some um, some new ones with the, within these last probably like three months just because I, I feel like I've been having a lot going on. Uh, so one of them is... Um, like first thing in the morning, I don't check my cell phone. Like I, as soon as I wake up, um, I don't look at my phone. I just try to take like a five minute time to just be without technology and just to think myself all the way through my day. So I kind of walk myself uh, through my day. Um, and then then I start picking up my phone and then, you know, I, I start my day. and I go through my, you know, my daily routine. Um, but that's my, my biggest one. So I guess that, that meditation through the day kind of sets me up. Oh, that meditation early in the morning sets me up for the rest of my day to kind of keep my, my thoughts cool, calm, and collected all the way throughout. So. I like that. I like, I, and, and I had said um, some time ago uh, that I was going to stop doing that every morning. You know, our, our natural thing is to grab that phone. To grab that phone. You know, yeah, I realized once I realized I was doing it, I had to be intentional about yeah. like not grabbing it. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, got it. Got to work on that. I, I like that uh, sway. I'm gonna start that on myself, brother Justin. How about you? Yeah, your habits, rituals, and disciplines that you do on a daily basis, brother. Uh, this is like a revolving door. I hadn't said it on anything, but uh, right now, you know, I'm a real. I have a lot going on. I'm always moving. I'm a real anxious person, so. I don't have much patience, so I have to put mechanisms in place to kind of force my teach my force myself to teach myself patience. So um, right now I got like a little garden in my back porch, um, and I go out every morning and you know prune it, water it, look stare at the plants for five ten minutes. Then I go out front and water my flowers out front, and then um, I you know walk walk around the neighborhood a few times just. Something that doesn't matter, doesn't require a whole lot of attention, a lot of effort, just something relaxing that, uh, you know, I have to force myself to wait on the, you know, the, the vegetables to develop or the flowers to bloom and things like that. So just thinking about that over the course of the day and looking forward to it every day, just giving me a little bit of peace that I haven't really been able to find anywhere else. So. I like that a lot, man. I used to have, I don't, I don't have a garden now. I used to have one. And it's nothing like you wake up, you know, you go out in your garden and you see a blossom on a tomato plant, you know, you, or or your peppers, you see that start. It's something to it that, that you know, one, it's relaxing, but then two, is a sense of satisfaction with it as well. And then I cook a lot, so it would be great to have my, my vegetables ready ready to go in, in a heartbeat. You know, that's good stuff, man. Another one I might steal from you, go back to it. I, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I might do one of those uh, things off of the balcony and you can, you know, yeah, that's what I got. It's, I mean, I started off with just a small one on the balcony just to get started, and I'll probably move to the yard next year. But, yeah, it's just a small, you know, yeah. four-by-four box with some dirt in it, man. Nice. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to steal that. I'm going to call it my Justin box. All right. Mm-hmm. Mr. Ramsey, habit, rituals, and disciplines. Well, well usually um, uh, my day starts by being in the presence of the Lord every day. You know, I uh, I sit, uh, I have us uh, get up in the morning. And the first thing I do is do my daily devotional. And that's the way I start off my day. 
uh, try to get myself in the right frame of mind and dealing with things and realizing that <clears throat> regardless of what happens during the course of the day, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's nothing I can do to change those things. I just have to deal with things the way they come and, uh, and stop stressing out over a lot of stuff because um, it's not going to make a, little, a whole lot of difference. So getting in the presence of the Lord kind of helps me in that direction. So that's usually what I do the first thing in the, every morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that as well. You know, I, I, and again, I'm, I'm with you on that. I know the brothers on this this call are, are that same way where we, we work on making sure that we're in the space of the creator every day. Oh, yeah. definitely. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that, you know, when you're, when you're in a space to release and, and know that you are not in control of everything and you show gratefulness for that, um, then that's a great way to start your day. That, mm -hmm. that goes for me hand in hand with the deep breathing every morning. So I appreciate that one. Well, brothers, we are at 745. Every week we end the exact same way. We're in the same space uh, at the Andrew and Walter Young YMCA. We have a tradition that we do uh, that was brought on by Queen Mother and Jerry Algani um, of organization in Cobra. And she would end every meeting with doing a, a ritual called a link in this chain. And so we've taken that on as well at Black Man Lab. And what we will do uh, every week when we're meeting in person and here we'll do it virtually um, is we link arms. So I'm gonna ask everybody to hold your arms up like this, like you're linking arms. And just repeat after me. I am a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't, and it won't break, break here. here. I'm a link in this chain. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, link a link in this, in this chain. chain. And it won't break here. And it won't, and it break, won't here. break here. We are links in this chain. We, we are links, links in, this in this chain. And we won't break here. And we won't, we won't break, break here. I say. I say. I say, brothers. Brothers, thank, hey, brothers, you, thank you so much. Appreciate yeah, y'all, man. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and, and sharing some deep details of your life. We yeah. appreciate that because yeah. maybe that will um, talk to somebody else out there that's going yeah. through some of the same stuff that you guys are seeing or or um, have have experienced and yeah. uh, help them move forward. So thank, thank you for your perspectives and your points of view. It was important that it was diverse like this, fellas. I really, really appreciate that, gentlemen, so much. Mark yeah. Lawson, appreciate you as always, super producer. And thanks for inviting me. Uh, I really appreciate it. It was a, uh, it was enlightening for me to uh, to uh, to uh, listen to some some you know some issues that uh, other folks are having as well. You know, so because we all have them. You know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Mr. Raz. Yeah, right. I appreciate you guys. Too. All right, Sway. We see y'all, man. We see y'all right, next week, now. brother. Love y'all, man. Love, Love y'all, brother. Peace. Melody attack